Okay, so I am talking with Miss Modi, who is an art teacher here at IICS. And just to start out, mm -hmm. as a general overview, what do you think that the benefits of art education are? From, from my experience working with children from all around the world with different language abilities and different language skills, I find that visual art is, <clears throat> well, all the arts, but visual art in particular is, is a universal language. So it's a way to communicate and express your personal experiences and also what your your um, your environment and your uh, hopes or your uh, imagination, your fantasy in a way that we can all experience and it doesn't have to be, it's not a, a, a verbal communication, it's a visual communication so we can all share it, share in it. And do you think it helps to have a teacher there to guide it or self-directed learning? That's a really good question. Um, I think that because this visual language is so broad and there are so many things you can consider, I think that the role of the art teacher is to sort of structure what you're going to express and how you're going to do it so that you can strengthen those abilities. So uh, the art teacher is important in um, uh, presenting ideas uh, and sh showing how certain um, uh, techniques and skills can be used in order to communicate. Because it is so overwhelming, you, you kind of need someone to guide you through it. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that art should be taken seriously and incorporated more thoroughly into the curriculum? like math and languages mm -hmm. are? Yeah, I started teaching in the U.S. when it was, it was taken very seriously. Um, but I think that what, visual, what art does, not just visual art, but all of the arts, it, as I mentioned before, it's a language that helps students uh, communicate their personal experience, experiences, and it also helps them learn about other cultures uh, and express their ideas and opinions about social situations, um, uh, political issues. It, it's just, it's a, it's a way to connect all of the subject areas together. Um, it's almost like a glue. And I don't think, I don't, I don't see it as a hierarchy as being in, in a level of other subjects. I kind of see it almost as this overarching thing that needs to interconnect all of the subjects. Because I view it as this different um, language. It's a visual language. And it, it's something that everyone can speak to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's universal. Degrees. And on a practical note, um, it's really important just in, in our world today where we're, we're uh, sort of bombarded with visual images uh, through the internet and um, and other places in advertising, and I think it's important for students to learn to understand how to uh, un how to interpret this whole visual language. It could be with media literacy courses, but also in visual art, how we use, say, composition to express a certain mood, or how colors can express mood, and, and things like that. I think that's what a lot of people don't see, actually, is that it's very useful, and it's not just if you want to be a painter, right. you should learn art, because it does show up in a lot of different fields. It does, and creative problem solving is pretty much everywhere right now, mm -hmm. and in art we do a lot of creative problem solving, so, yeah. So, how do you think that the fact that I'm going to be teaching the orphans, how do you think that the fact that they're orphans is going to affect their learning? I predict that you won't find it to be... Um, I don't think the, the fact that they're orphans is going to make any difference in their their skill level or the, the products that they produce. What you'll probably find is that they're incredibly enthusiastic and excited to express their ideas. And depending on what you shape, what kind of lesson you shape, you could get some very um, honest uh, depictions of their life or maybe they they maybe that they, they will feel that they want to express more about their uh, personal conditions their individual conditions or their um, their fantasy world it'll be interesting to see what what lesson you choose to do and how 
uh, how you open it up to them and how they react to it. But I think that you'll find that they're, they'll be just as eager, if not more, than a student who's, who's uh, in a school like ours. I was talking to Ms. Saza about the same thing, and she said that maybe looking into art therapy as well mm -hmm. would be beneficial, but what are your opinions on art therapy? Art therapy? <clears throat> well, I think it's important to distinguish art therapy from art as therapy. So there's art therapy, which is very psychology-based and also kind of physical, for physical rehabilitation. So an art therapist might use art in order to strengthen um, coordination with patients that have neurological disorders. So it's a very practical thing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas a lot of art is used as therapy in a way uh, in, with maybe students who have had traumatic experiences, or children, um, for example, <clears throat> just to allow them to express who they are and, and maybe to... Uh, allow them to open up in a way that they might not verbally. When I, I taught in Chicago for many years in the inner city, in kind of a ghetto, a ghetto neighborhood mm -hmm. with students that were had really um, traumatic home lives. And um, in many ways, I considered my job as, you know, we were doing art as therapy. I mean, it was just this moment where they could create something of their own that um, empowered them, that gave them self-esteem, those are, those are a lot of additional things that I didn't mention before that art can do. Mm -hmm. You're making something that's your own, and that's, that's really, uh, that's unique, too. And not all the other subject areas allow you to do that. That's true. So you could, I would think about maybe shaping a lesson that could um, allow them to create something that is about themselves. You know, that is about their personal experiences, if you wanted to take that route. Instead of teaching them sort of a technical lesson on drawing, maybe think about doing um, more of a lesson that has to do with uh, maybe their hopes and dreams or you know, something, something more like that. I'm going to go back to what you said about language and the actual teaching itself. So how would you approach teaching students with a language <clears throat> barrier? Well, I think that that's one of the great things about visual art. Um, you're just that much, it's just a little bit easier than, than some of the other subject areas. Uh, I would have a lot of um, visual examples and I would try, maybe come up with a list of vocabulary words that you could translate that would they might have fun teaching you the Turkish, you know? So mm -hmm. if let, let's say your lesson, you want to focus on color, or think of maybe some of the elements of art that you want to focus on, mm -hmm. or some basic technical things that you want them to do. And then if you can come up with the Turkish, find the Turkish word for it, then in a way it'll sharpen your lesson. Because if you just constantly, you know, use that one particular word, I think they'll understand. And if you have visual examples, that will also help them. Okay. Of what you want to do. So you need to think about what what the project is. But if you want to give them some type of direction for their work, like if you want them to do more self-expression, personal expression, you may want to come up and see if you can translate just like a basic sentence, like, mm -hmm. you know, in this area, you know, you want to... You know, show your hopes and dreams, this is you. Like maybe a self-portrait type thing is just mm -hmm. what I'm thinking of. But um, I can help you shape that lesson if you want. You okay. can talk about what might work with them. Because we, I, 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 we need to find out what the age, the ages are of the kids that you would be working with, too. And just, I think, two more quick questions. Mm -hmm. What kind of art do you think is the best to teach kids at this age level? So drawing, so, watercolor. I guess we're... So we're talking probably like... Is it elementary? Um, if they're really young, I would say clay would be really fun. But I think for the sake, for this particular, the limitations that you have, I would stick with paint. Um, 
drawing and painting. Maybe maybe you could do something with um, crayon and watercolor. Watercolor is really nice because it's easy to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, it might be fun to come up with something that that has an interesting effect. Um, so like watercolor resist, where you have the wax and you do a crayon, crayon kind of uh, outline and then you put the watercolor on top because it um, looks good. It does. You know? And one more, how do you think is going to be the best way to measure success in teaching? I would say that, um, I wouldn't, well, I, I, first of all, I would depend, it dep depends on your lesson. So you want to come up with some type of objective for them. Like, do, do you want them to maybe co complete the piece? Do you want them to show some type of skill? Do you want to teach an actual skill? Um, do you want it to them to uh, is the objective that they you know express something about themselves and their lives? So think about what you want the lesson to be about, and that can be the measure of success right there. Okay. Whether or not they've actually done this, that, you know, have they created a work that expresses an aspect of themselves, or and I and I suppose another one that's kind of difficult to measure is, you know, whether or not they've enjoyed it and, you know, that's sort of an extra thing. That I think that could be measure. talking also with the people who work at the orphanage mm -hmm. and how they were affected by it, if it mm -hmm. changed them at all. Do you have any ideas about what you want to do? I was thinking, depending on where the area is, but teaching outside so that they can draw from their surroundings. Maybe starting out with drawing would be the easiest because it's mm -hmm. the less messy and most straightforward. But the drawing outside wouldn't be so much taking from their own personal experiences, mm -hmm. as you were saying before, and I really like that idea. So I'll think about it, mm -hmm. see what the first lesson can do, and we can How, how many do you plan on doing? As many as possible, because um, I think we're only going to the orphanage maybe three times. And the personal project finishes in March, so I'd like to go ideally once every two weeks, even if it can't be with the whole orphanage group. So we'll see if I can go on my own. Or Yeah, I'll find out that from you. Just keep in mind that with elementary, drawing from observation is it's a little harder, just developmentally. Mm -hmm. They're not quite there yet. They might enjoy more something... Um, yeah, that's more uh, imagination based mm -hmm. at that at that age. Okay. Um, usually, drawing from observation doesn't really kick in until maybe fifth grade, just because developmentally they're just their their ability to organize spatially it just isn't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. So it could could frustrate a lot of them. Okay. I didn't know that, but I just yeah. realized I didn't start drawing real things until about sixth grade. Yeah, it's, it's just because it's... Now, my daughter's done it here. Um, she just has this... She likes to do it, but it's... Um, it's sort of a detached sort of analysis of something, whereas I think these little guys that you're going to work with might really want to, you know, make something... Think about maybe doing a final product, like where you're in there for four, to four classes and they build on a mm -hmm. piece and then they have a final thing. Um, maybe they trace their bodies on big butcher paper and you have them um, kind of fill the head part with uh, like their hopes and dreams and then they can decorate the, you know, their, cl with their good, clothes on. And, that's a good one. And we can help you, like the butcher paper we have, so... Um, you saw those figures in the mm -hmm. hallway, so it's similar where you're tracing the body, uh, but they, you know, at that age they'd love to do things mm -hmm. like that. Well, thank you okay. so much. Yeah, sure. This helped a lot. Okay. And I'm going to go over this video so later on.